I recently had some code that needed to remove duplicate values from a large set. This wasn't a performance critical part of my code, so when it wasn't running fast enough, I pulled out pprof to see if I could figure out why. The most time consuming part of the code was Go's map access. Thus started my journey to map optimizations. Let's look at the original case. Each object was identified by an XY coordinate pair of float values. The first optimization opportunity came when I realized that these weren't really floats, but integers. The routine that calculated them was returning float values because the math it did required floats, but the results should always be integers. If I got an X value of 4.001, that didn't mean that was the actual coordinate, just that there was a bit of a rounding error in the math. Surprisingly, converting the values to ints actually slowed things down a bit, but pprof showed me that the runtime was using a different, faster hashing algorithm. I suspect that the faster algorithm wasn't faster enough to make up for the extra time converting floats to ints. While this seemed a failure on the surface, there were some clues here that more improvement could be had. I went a step further and ditched the coordinate structure and instead did some bit shifting to store the X and Y coordinates in a single 64-bit integer. Sure enough, this resulted in a big performance improvement, as Go was now using not only a faster hashing algorithm, but also using different access and assign routines. So this was the best, right? I mean, it's got fast right in the name. However, I was on a mission. See, the hashing algorithms that Go uses for maps have some drawbacks. They're slow. I'll talk about why a little later, but I thought I could speed things up a bit just by switching to another algorithm. Unfortunately, Go doesn't give me the option to choose the hashing algorithm like some other languages do, so I had to write my own map implementation. At this point, you might be thinking, you idiot. Do you really think you can outsmart the Go development team? Obviously, I thought so. And you might be surprised to see the result. See, maps aren't terribly complex to implement. At the core, a map is a hashing algorithm and an array of linked lists. The hash means that it's very quick to identify the linked list containing a particular value, and the lists are short enough that searching them is very fast. So I wrote a basic implementation. At this point, you're probably thinking, you idiot. Do you actually have enough math jitsu to write a faster hash algorithm that provides good key distribution? And if you're not thinking that, let me explain the question. Any hash algorithm for maps needs to balance two characteristics. It needs to calculate the hash value quickly because that value needs to be calculated every time the map is accessed for either reads or writes. But it also needs to provide good distribution across all the locations in the array. Otherwise, we could end up with half our values in a single location, and since iterating through long linked lists is slow, we'd lose any speed we gain during hash calculation dealing with the linked list. So I'm an arrogant idiot, right? Not quite, as I know a secret. See, Go's map hashing also has a third requirement, that it's unpredictable. If it's not obvious why, consider the fact that the HTTP server puts the headers in a map. If the hash algorithm is predictable, then an attacker could make an HTTP request with many headers that all hash to the same value and is simply DDoS. Since the Go team never knows where this might be required, they ensure that all the hashing algorithms they provide are hard to predict. But there was no vector for an attacker to inject data in my use case. So I was betting that if I threw out the unpredictability requirement, that I could find a hash algorithm that would end up being faster overall. And by find, I mean that I did a Google search and found someone smarter than me recommending this. And by golly, my code was about 15% faster than Go's built-in map. After patting myself on the back until my arm was sore, I decided to make this video to brag about how great I was. And while doing so, I realized that I'd forgotten an optimization in the use of Go's maps. See, using a struct as the value and just checking to see if the key exists is known to be faster than using a Boolean as the value. So I tested this out to make sure that my code was still faster and it wasn't. So I wandered off into the woods to die in shame and obscurity. However, instead of dying in obscurity, I realized a bunch of possible improvements that I could make to my code. Maybe I could achieve my goal after all. The first improvement was to stop thinking of this as a map. It was a map-like structure, but custom built for a specific purpose. 
Thus I threw away the exists and set functions and replaced them with a single conditional set function that sets the value, if not already set, while returning a boolean to indicate whether it's already existed. This meant that in the case where the value was not already set, certain operations, such as calculating the hash, were executed once instead of twice. This didn't improve speed as much as I expected, but it did push things in the right direction. The next idea was to make each hash bucket store more than one value, which is how Go's internal hash buckets work. However, this performed worse than the basic linked list, which was a mystery to me. Then I made a change that blew my mind. All previous versions had allocated a backing array of pointers to hash buckets, then created buckets as needed. It had occurred to me that it might speed things up if I allocated an array of buckets, then filled in the values without having to do additional allocations. And boy was I right. With this change, my implementation was now 25% faster than the fastest version using Go's built-in map. I had one more thing to verify. As mentioned earlier, poor bucket distribution could result from a poor hashing algorithm slowing things down. So I tried a handful of different algorithms to see if I could get better distribution and thus better performance. I even went so far as to make a simplified version of Go's memhash64 in assembly. As it turns out, a simplified version of one of Go's 64-bit algorithms performed the best. So did I make a better map than Go's map? Well, yes and no. Yes, because it's better at what I needed than Go's map. It's faster, and since this is a speed-critical part of the code, it was worth the work. One may look at the code and point out that it doesn't have the ability to delete keys or resize the backing array, but neither of these are needed for my implementation, since I can estimate the required array size at initialization, and I never need to delete keys. Additionally, the ability to resize the backing array isn't difficult to add if I want, since Go's map implementation is already written in Go, copying the algorithm wouldn't be terribly difficult. But my implementation has the important weakness of probably being predictable. In my use case, it's an acceptable weakness. However, it would be completely unacceptable for a general purpose map. So for general purpose, it's not a better map. It's a shame that Go doesn't allow specifying the hash algorithm. But given the implementation details, I can see why. Something equivalent to my conditional set function could be a nice improvement, although I suspect that use cases are limited enough that it's not in high demand.